special place to come from all over the world. The expats come back from go to come back to go to the Galway races, and they spend money in the town in the city. And the gambler, it's renowned for the big bets and good gambles and the good handicaps and the Galway hurdle, the Galway plate, uh, and plenty of drink in the town. The champagne bars open and the place is vibrant and it's full. Galway is a fabulous city any time of the year, but for this week, there's nowhere else in the world where you'd rather be than Galway. It's a marathon, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's that and list all of the only two seven-day festivals I can think of. You go up to Cheltenham and they think four days is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we try to tell them that it, the fourth day in Galway we're only getting gold, the Thursday is the big night. So, uh, yeah, it takes a bit of getting for, for man and beast, so uh, it's, it's, it's great crack. From your point of view, is it very unique here? Oh, absolutely. The, the buzz here is, is unrivaled, I'd say, most of the country. Um, there are times you're standing up in the box and you physically, if you want to stand down, you couldn't, there's no room. You have the atmosphere, you have the buzz about the races, you have the buzz about the racetrack. You meet new people all the time at the races and you meet friends at the races and the atmosphere is just electric. It's a different mix, like you meet everyone from every walk and of every, every pocket, every bet. You have the 250, you have the 500, you have the 1000, but there's always one thing in common. You are all trying to back a winner. When you come to Galway, every horse wants to win the race and only one horse can win and only three or four can be placed. So there's, a, there's always big fears in Galway. There's money for all the horses. The turnover can be high and as a bookmaker you need to lay bets, high turnover and good fields. And when the going changes in Galway, when they come up that hill, horses get tired. I find, you know, it, 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 I expect to win in Galway. It doesn't always work like that and yeah. you have bad races and you have good races. Yeah. But if you get if you can if you can get down with Wells horses beaten go away, that's yeah. always good for the bookmakers. Even now, that that's that's yeah, that still that's stays now. That still stays now. You know, uh, and again William Mullins is having a good he's having a good week this week. But there's three days to go. I'm optimistic that we're gonna we're gonna win. But punters win and are, are the bookmakers win. Either or if you have a good week at Galway, how does that affect the rest of your year? Or does it not? I mean, there seems like there's quite a lot of pressure on Galway, but does it have an effect that if you have a good Galway, you have a good year? Yeah, Galway can make the year for you. It can keep you. If you get a good Galway, you can go into La Salle with a bit of heart and you'll be a bit braver in, in La Salle, we said, which is be the, festival, the last festival of the year. And you'll be a bit braver there going in there because you'd have a few quid to drive on with, you know? Yeah. But if you lose in Galway, you're doing no good in Galway, you're on the back foot then, facing into a long winter. <laughs> it's not, not a good place to be, facing into a long winter, that have to doing no good, you know? Galway is, I mean, we're coming to the end of the summer now, and we're kind of winding down from the busy period, so if, if you don't have a good Galway, it's a long winter after that. Course bookmaking has had to move with the times and exchanges now form the markets, but that doesn't mean that traditions are totally lost and there are those who can still price a board and know the form book inside and out. One thing that my father always did was look at form and form books mm -hmm. and I always did it up until the form, book, the form book basically became obsolete and now I do. I go home this morning, I got up, I got the gunners off the uh, HRI side at 10 o'clock and started the work for tomorrow. So I would actually price races up myself. Okay. And I do it every day. I've yep. done it. There's not a day I've ever gone racing 30 years that I have not a look at the form book. Because it's like going, for me, it's like going to school without your homework done. Yeah. And I can't, you know, somebody just because the exchange goes 10 to 1, all right, it's a, it's a, it makes the market and everything. But if that's the wrong price, well, instead of going 10, I might go 8 or might go 7. But I have a, an inkling of what I want to lay in every race and how I want to play a race. Or if something gets too short that I want to lay it, or if something gets too big that I don't want to lay it. And because I've done my work, I have the confidence then to, to, to go ahead and do it. And if I get it wrong, it's nobody else's fault but my own. My father always did it. He, st he stuck by his own opinion, did the work the night before, and I've... I've always done it and people just say why why do you bother like you know because before the exchange came along it was so important to have it done because you don't yeah, you, you don't you'd open yeah. the market up here yeah. like you know and you would have 20 people 20 deep around your joint because nobody quite a few there's very few bookmakers in the ring who would have had the knowledge or the capability to do that and I'm sure if you go around the ring we'll tell you that that there's only a handful of bookmakers over the in, in the previous generation who could, that, who could actually stand up and price a board yeah. and it was a skill yeah. and that skill has now been taken out because the exchange sets basically yeah. sets the market but you still have to have an opinion and you yeah. still have to know where you're going and and you know whether you want to force something or whether you want to keep it in your side so 
um, yeah, I still do the work every night. And you must have got it wrong and right a good few times. Oh, you know, the man who hasn't got it wrong, it, you know, isn't in this ring. It's, <laughs> and I would say probably you've got it wrong more times than I've got it right, maybe. But um, it, it, I, to me, I have to go. Without doing the work, I don't know what I'm betting on. Or, you know, you see some bookmakers and they would say to you, you know, the first race of Maiden Hurdle or a, or a two-year race. And they, they work the figures, and that's fine. They do it their way, but I do it mine. This day and age now, they were, they were all had different professions. Now that the computer has made them bookies because it tells them everything. The odds we used to sell up, we used to be up till two o'clock in the morning doing farm and trying to create our own prices and this and that and whatever. But now you can sit at home in your living room, drink tea, and they put the betting exchanges on, and you can dictate a market or a race meeting, you can dictate the market of a race. Do you still take a view on races? Do you still, like, are you, your personal views, does that still count for anything these days? Yeah, it would, the couple of guys that are with me, they would have been studying, studying the form. But you have, as a professional bookmaker, you're watching what guys are backing and what they should be backing or how much they're having on. So when you start working in a race, you, the, the race, the race unfolds. Where, where the favourite's drifting, something else is coming in, and you're trying to, you're trying. It's a bit like the stock market. You're trying to see where, where, where it's going. It doesn't always work like that. And you're trying to limit your, limit your risks, have high turnover, high tickets, and limit the risks. And you can do that consistently, and not do anything silly. I might be here 27 years. It's when you start being doing silly things, that's when the cash can go very, very easy. You lay some pretty big bets, I presume. Mm -hmm. Everyone says you're one of the main players here in the ring. Where is the line drawn, or is the no line drawn? Are you? Oh, how yeah. does that work? Well, uh, Excuse my naivety on no, it, but... You, you, you're a million, it's a good question, actually, but you just have to cut your cloth, depending on what you can win and what you feel you can lose. And, you know, and this game is a, is a very uh, good uh, leveller. You know, the minute you, can st you stick your neck out, you can get it chopped off, and if you stick it out again, you've, you're going to get it chopped off again. And you just have to learn when to just take that chance, or when to just take an extra few bob out of a horse that you wouldn't normally do. And these meetings, you, you can afford to do it because that if you do have a bad race in the first race, well then the money and the, cir the money is circulating around here. That if you get a, a result in the second race, you've got a chance of getting your money back. If you go to the Curra or on Monday, which would be fairly quiet, or mid or do midweek meeting and you lose too much in the first race, you could spend six races trying to get it back. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's just a, it's, 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 like, it's like a gut feeling, you know. Come racing and you come into this betting ring, the likes of this week, you could have what you want on a horse here. At, really? Yeah, at a price, yeah. You could have lumpy, lumpy bets. And you get on, you get paid in cash. That's cash is king, like I say. You can come, you can have 10 grand each way on a horse in this ring this week. Now you'll get it on, but you can have them type of bets, you know? Like any bookmaker, it's risk management, but if when you come to the track, you can have whether it be a five euro bet or five grand bet. You can have, you can have a 10,000 to one, a 20,000 to one, and even five grand. You put the cash in the satchel, you get paid straight away, you get paid with civility, and you move on to the next race. But you build up a repertoire with the customer all the time, so they know where to go. And that's where I think that we're an integral part of the racing experience, whether it be in England or in Galway or anywhere for that matter. They're a colourful lot, bookmakers. People that gamble, they're generally characters, you know, the whole about money, it comes and goes. But at the, it, I want to win, they want to win. But once no one gets hurt in the process, and we all get on, on, to, on together. But there is big hitters in Galway, and there's big punters, you know, and they're, they're the professional punters. They can't get on in the exchanges, and they can't even get on in the betting shops, but they can get on here in the betting ring. Yeah, yeah. And they know they can. And they have the followers too, you know. Now one thing there is no getting away from in the betting ring is that this is a male dominated profession. But there are women who stand and work in the ring and some of them have been born and bred into the game. My mum was the first female bookmaker and she worked in the outside ring, which was in the middle of the race course. Right. And that's nearly where everyone came race and before it got modernised. Then we moved in here and I worked as a clerk, a runner and a bookie. And I stood up 10 years after mum stood up outside. She was the first female bookmaker. And worked for years there and then moved down. We work in the mayor's garden now because like the local people go racing there and it's very, very busy. So it's just a different form. There's three different areas. Oh, sorry, for a sec. Yep. 10 each way on. 10 each way, six, Brennan. Sorry. Thank you. Plow on. And um, 
So we work down there and it's very, very busy. As a female, there's more females involved yeah. to before. Is that something you noticed in Canada oh, when you were standing when you were the only female? There was about two of us early on and three, me, okay, Mary okay, Fitzsimons okay, and myself. We stood up. It was tough, but we earned our respect. Every day is a new day and every day is a learning experience <laughs> at the racetrack. And um, for me, uh, because I'm a woman in a, in a man's business, I think like a man, but I act like a woman. You're a very glamorous woman standing in the ring here. And like you say, it's a, very, it's a man's world. Um, tell me about that. Is it something you notice a lot or are you...? Um, it can be, but I have to say that all the bookies get on very well and it's a good team of book, bookmakers and we all watch out for each other. But um, business is business at the end of the day. We're all here to graft to work, to, to make money, and it, it's a business, so we all have to work hard at it, so um, you just have to do your best yeah. when you're here and, and make the most of it. Now you have very bad days and you have very good days, yeah. but it's like a roller coaster. One of the well-known characters on course is this man, Kieran Fitzgerald, a.k.a. The Weasel, and I was told that I couldn't visit the Galway Ring without meeting him. I stand here for Dara Fitzpatrick, yeah. one of Ireland's biggest bookmakers, and uh, a great man to lay. I stand right there, and I take the bets, um, I shout, I roar, and all the ladies come chiming into me. I love it. <laughs> OK, so tell me this. How long have you been standing here at Galway? Uh, approximately 15 years. And you're quite a sort of famous character among uh, the Irish racing community, aren't you? Tell us a little bit about being called the weasel. Yes, a lot of people like me and a lot of people don't like me. Um, I'm called the weasel because I can be a bit obstreperous at times. A lady okay. called me a wasp yesterday, so I don't know why. And do you get a buzz off standing up there? I love it. I shout, I roar, and I bawl. You're 71 now. 71, yeah. How long will you continue standing here at Galway for? Um, I was in Punchestown about 40 years ago, and an old la a, a, a fortune teller told me, and she was the only lady that I ever believed in my life. The only lady I ever believed in my life. She told me I'd live to be 96. And that's why I believed her. And I'd love to be at this game till I'm 90. Historically, Ballybrit has been famous for gambles that have been played out on the track. It doesn't always go the way of the punters, but the on-course layers remember some far from ideal days here at Galway. Galway over the years has been, I'll be honest, it's been more good than bad anyway to start off with. Um, the one thing that anybody ever says to me of Galway and the one name comes into my head is Dermot Weld. It's, you know, the man has had a quiet couple of years recently, but, you know, you go back to 2012 or 2011, that, you know, out of 52 races here at the festival, with every type of race on the, on the programme, that he won 17 races or something that week. It, you know, it's for, phenomenal. It, it's incredible. And a lot of the stories or a lot of the gambles over the years probably would have originated from Roswell House. Um, he was a master, and it didn't matter whether, you know, you see a go and go, for example, who's a Belmont Stakes winner, won his maiden around here, so he had the very, very top class horses, but he was able to win the low grade handicaps with horses, you know, and that looked totally exposed, and you'd look, and they were at the bottom of the hill and it'd be five lengths clear, and just pulling away, you know, so, and he won novice chases, he won maiden hurdles, he won flat handicaps, he won goal, two Galway plates in a row with Ansar, you know, so, anytime anybody ever says Galway, it's, it's Dermot Weld. If he had a good week, you guys had a terrible week. Absolutely. Just yeah. hands down, that's yeah. how it yeah. was. That's what it was. And people would have followed the horses blindly. You know, you, you know, you do your work, you based it on the form of what a horse has done. Then you took, you take in the well factor, so a horse was going to be five. You might say, OK, do you know what, I'll take a chance, I'll go seven to two this. And next thing, you'd lay seven to two, you'd lay three to one, you'd lay five to two. And they're, they just... Well, they just take it at any price. Any price, price any price. Michael Winters uh, is a renowned trainer from Cork and he had a horse called Miss United in 2013. It won the Galway Hurdle. Mm -hmm. the following year, he's a very popular character and trainer around the Lily Langtree in Goodwood. And the whole mm -hmm. track in Galway backed the horse. And I was betting on the away meeting in Goodwood and I couldn't keep them all off the horse. 
the horse duly obliged and the payout was into a six figure sum so that's a horse that I'll never forget it was an absolute <laughs> disaster for me I was paying out for two three hours we had to get mon money from everywhere to pay out the people but the, but the only thing is the people they reinvest the money Michael Winters is a character I'm sure that your, your viewers will know, know yeah. who Michael Winters is subtitles uh, needed subtitles needed but that was one race that, that stands out on a Sunday morning there was um, a great character Father Breen we've known as the Breener so he says mass here, he started saying mass here on a Sunday before racing. So he gave a marvellous tip this day, a horse of Kevin Ryan's in the 2005 View Humago. Had actually no form. So we were working in the mayor's garden. And being here early on the Sunday, because you were going home, we heard the tip and we just thought, ah, oh, mug's money. And we got cleaned out. Met Father Breen on the way out and said thanks very much for his good mass and how we got cleaned and he told me you're all right Mary Desi Hughes horse running tomorrow in Nice it was a listed race due respect and he did win <sighs> so I got my money back Barney Corley he had some 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 great gambles that came off here yeah the likes of magic combination and them things and he had us all running scared and them horses did win there was horses getting in as reserves and so they were coming up the hill on their own and he would have plenty of money on he would had bombs on them. Now there was one or two of them went 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 the, by the wayside, but nine times out of ten, he got the money. He got the money. He did. He did. And what like on a day like that, going back, you know, what what's it like for you standing up there thinking we could be in trouble there? So you just shrug your shoulders and move on to the next race. So there's nothing you can do about it at that stage. <laughs> Grin and bear it. Move yeah. on. Next race. And that's it. Many of those tales are told from a time when the ring was booming because there was little other option than to come to the track if you wanted to have a bet. Times are obviously different now and there is no getting away from the fact that Encore's betting figures are down. But what does the future hold for the industry? I'm optimistic. I mean, in the last, in the last couple of months, we've actually bought another pitch here and another pitch in Leperstown. So our firm is actually expanding. Um, maybe, maybe not the right time, I don't know. But, uh, I think there will always be a market for people to come racing, to have a bet. As you say, people find it hard to get on online or maybe in shops or on the phone or whatever. So, I mean, we're here, we're providing a service. If we enjoy it, it's what we do. And, you know, I don't see any reason why, why we won't continue doing it anyway. It's like anything with technology and the way things are going and, and the younger people with the apps. But all, all said, I don't think that any racetrack without bookmakers will be quite the same. Whether you go to France or Chartain or everywhere, when, book, when people come to Galway, they converge on the betting ring because there's a buzz, there's an atmosphere. They want to have a bet, they want to have a go. And you're standing, you're not, you're not lying up in the queue or, or, or in cyberspace money. It's real cash with real people and you're dealing with characters and you, and you get paid and you have a laugh and a banter. And at the end of the day, that's what going to the race it should be. It should be about social and enjoying yourself. Things will change and move on again. You know, that's just the progression of life, you know, technology and that. Younger people, you know, the cashless society could be a problem going forward. Yeah. Credit cards, debit cards. Younger people aren't using as cash as, as, as much as they would. So in 10 or 15 years, where will that be? Who knows? That's a problem I can see for bookmakers or anyone that's dealing in the cash business. However, I hope I'm still doing it 27 years because I've enjoyed it for the next 27 months I have. I'm in the right place. But you don't seem to sort of think people envisage that when you have a bad day it's all doom and gloom, when you have a great day you're off sort of popping champagne. Is it as high and low as that? Or no, you all... we just, we're level headed enough, we just do the one thing all the time. We, we, we're not great, we don't show much emotion, we're not Lewis. Yeah. You can't, because I, I, do, I do find it's a sign of weakness. <laughs> people that see you, oh look he's out there doing his brains or something, you know, or, or don't be jolly or having have making fun of people when I, when I'd have a good day. I just just keep it keep it level. Win today, win tomorrow, lose today, lose tomorrow. It all comes comes and goes. There must be a real well there is a real sense of community in there and do you all get on? I mean is it like good banter? Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely you yeah the banter sometimes you probably need to go out after eight o'clock me to tell you most of it. But uh, <laughs> yeah I mean you met some of them. Yeah. There, there's some great characters in the ring. Uh, the Dublin lads especially. Uh, some of them are great crack. Um, but no, we all, you know, there might be the odd crossword on a busy day, but it's quickly forgotten. You know, we're, we're, we realise we're all in the one game, we're all, we're all here to do the same thing, pretty yeah. much. So, uh, no, it's, 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 
a big lot of camaraderie here on the ring. It must not feel like work. It doesn't look like work to me. You look to all be having way too much fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, on a, on a good day, when the weather is shining and you're busy, there's no place you'd rather be. A day like Thursday, with the rain we got, you know, maybe days like that I wish I'd worked harder at school. Ah. But, uh, you know, I mean, no, I love what I do. Um, I, I, they say if you like what you do, you never work a day in your life, and I don't feel like I have. I had spent my youth at the races, I'd spent every summer holiday, I'd spent every Easter holiday, every Christmas, and racing to me was, that was it, that was going to be my life, and I've stuck at it ever since. And I, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I still get a buzz out of it, I love it. Do you? Yeah, even I, now? I even do now, and yes, and people will say, but Megan isn't the game it was, and it's not the same as what it was 10 and 15, and we all know that, but I still genuinely get a bu buzz, and you would have to, when you, when you look at yesterday, and you know, Unless you were digging holes in the road, like why else would you stand out in the rain and, <laughs> and get soaked all the way through unless yeah. you actually loved it, you know? Yeah. And, and I do, I get a kick out of it and I think it's fabulous and it's a great game. You get to meet a lot of very, very nice people, a lot of very genuine people and obviously then there's the rogues as well that you have to keep your eyes on. I love it. The people in the ring, people come racing, they're the best people in the world. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be here as long as I can anyway. This is what I want to do and this is what I enjoy doing. It doesn't feel like work for me because I love what I do. I did A-levels and O-levels, but I'm, I'm, uh, I, uh, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing this, you know. I'm very fortunate. I like what I do, yeah. you know, and I really do. It doesn't feel like a job, right? It doesn't feel like a job. Once Galway finished, say, on Sunday, I'll be looking forward to Galway next year. I just love Galway races. You envisage doing this for the next 10 years? Will I come oh back my, to Galway in yeah, 10 years? Absolutely. I'm sure we'll still be here in 10 years, maybe 20, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Hotels rebuilt for next year. We've had them built on block. <laughs> That's what we do. Year on year. Year on year. Wouldn't miss it. Not for the world. <laughs> <laughs>